Well, hello there. My name is Georgia Newbury. I run a flower farm and floristry business here between fashionable Bruton and up and coming with Canton in sunny Somerset in southwest England. And I thought today we'd do a quick five minutes on seed saving because it's the end of the summer here and a lot of my annuals are going over and it's time, if you like, to save a little seed and then you'll save yourself some money for next year. And you may have something you've really loved, an annual you've really loved, and you may not have a label, <laughs> but you'd really like to have it again next year. So for that reason, it's worth saving seed. However, before I go any further, just think twice before you save all the seed in the world. One, if the seed comes from a plant which was labelled an F1 hybrid, do not save the seed, it won't come true. It's a first generation hybrid, don't do it. Uh, you don't know what you're gonna get. Two, you can save seed from practically anything. However, um, sometimes, and it's worth thinking about this, it is quicker to dig the plant up, split it, take cuttings, uh, layer it. There are lots and lots of different ways to propagate a plant. So do think twice before you just randomly rush around the garden and collect all your seed. If you've got a great big enormous happy delphinium, hmm, perhaps dig that up and you can take basil cuttings, pot them up for next year. Or if you've got a great big clump of sedum, again, dig it up, split it. Echinacea, dig it up, split it. Anything that you've got a nice big plant and it's a perennial, chances are you can split it. Um, I have already done a little clip on taking cuttings, so that's another option. Lots of ways that you can propagate. However, for annuals particularly, collecting seed is a great way to give yourself good stock for next year, and you can um, just <laughs> have a little collection and hang them up somewhere cool and airy and out of direct sunlight, and then you've got something for next year. Um, by the way, if you're enjoying these clips, you can subscribe somewhere here as a subscription. Oh, I've got something in my nose. It's a subscribe button. Uh, you can click the bell icon somewhere um, and we'll tell you when we've got new clips out. And if the information you're getting from them is useful, then you can always buy me a coffee, which is incredibly generous of you. Obviously, it's not a real coffee. It's a virtual coffee. Um, but it's a way of supporting these little clips, uh, which I really appreciate. And the more I am supported, the more I want to do them. So <laughs> thank you very much. There's tea cake barking. Um, anyway, I better get a move on because a busy day ahead. So um, what do you need to save seed? Well, a pair of scissors and some paper bags. Uh, I'm a great believer. I think all households obviously need a great big wad of brown paper bags in a cupboard partly for seed saving, but, you know, wrapping presents, all sorts of things. So I have a great big watch. I bought 500 uh, brown paper bags years and years ago, and I'm still working my way through them. And uh, I particularly use them for seed sowing. So what have I been going round and collecting? Well, here we have wild carrot. Now, you can see that this is still quite green. That doesn't matter. If... Uh, it's got quite nice big seed heads on it. You can see if I put them, then they're in focus, or maybe not, <laughs> a bit close. Anyway, they will be absolutely fine, cut into a paper bag, and you can let them dry out in the paper bag. The seed will finish ripening in there, and I hang my paper bags up on a hook. <laughs> there we are, out of direct sunlight, cool, airy, what you don't want is a build-up of damp. Um, somebody asked me whether I use a desiccating agent. The answer is no. Uh, I just let them quietly... I like everything to happen at its own pace. So um, I will just leave them there. I'm not going to sow them till next year now, so they can ripen nicely. Uh, if I had got some more ripe seed, so I could look out a little bit later on, you know, in a week or two, I might find drier seed heads with riper seed. Um, then I could sow it now to overwinter in my tunnel. Uh, but personally, I always, I tend to cut the wild carrot later in the season, so I don't need it early in the season. So think, 
just because you've got something doesn't mean you have to have masses of it. And just because you've got masses of it doesn't mean you have to sew it now. Um, otherwise, you know, plan more carefully. This is Larkspur. And you can see pink Larkspur. There you go. Uh, obviously, when you've cut your seed heads, do write on your paper bag what you've got and the date of when you do it. And as you can see here, I've put the 9th. Obviously, I've got the date wrong. It is still August. I'm clearly wishing my life away. So I collected these this seed on the 25th of the 8th. I must change that. 21. Uh, if you're in America or anywhere else in the world, we weirdos in England, uh, we do the date and then the month, the day of the month and then the month and then the year. We don't do it the other way around. Uh, like you, you friends across the pond. Anyway, here is pink larkspur. Now, it's very, very non-specific, but I have had this pink larkspur seeding itself around my garden for years and years and years. So I know it's not a... It's not a an F1 hybrid, um, but uh, and I know that that is plenty of seed for me. That's going to be loads for me. So I've just collected one, and again, it's gone in the bag, and it can be slowly. It can just ripen away, ripen away until I'm ready for it. There are other things that are much sort of more obvious. Oh, my hair is doing something very odd. It's time for a haircut. I'm going to put it out of the way because it's annoying me. That's better. Um, so here, for example, calendula. Calendula is incredibly easy to take seed. Um, this, I happen to know, is a variety called Touch of Red. And if I... You see how crunchy it is on the stem? Often people will say, put the plastic bag, put the paper bag over the seed head before you snip the stem because you risk losing the seed and it is true once the seed is very ripe like this it is very very fragile and if i do this crunch it's not going to happen it doesn't take much to separate all the seeds look take out bits of there can you see there so that is plenty of calendula touch of red for next year. It's um, that each one of these curly bits is a seed. They're big seeds, so they're very easy to do. It'd be quite fun to see the children. It's easy for them to see what you're doing. Um, but obviously, calendula, unless you're growing to make soap or cream or um, for salad, there's a limit to how much calendula you're going to need in life. I think so um, don't collect too much seed you'll end up annoyed with it because you'll feel overwhelmed I'm a great fan of people not feeling overwhelmed Cerinthi major perforescence great one to collect seed because it's expensive um, so if I'm thinking about what I'm going to what seed I'm going to collect I will automatically think I'll go for the more expensive things first um, but it's also another one that might be fun for children because the, oh, the seeds are really big. They're really big and so they're easy to collect. They tend also to seed themselves around because the seeds are quite heavy. They're quite big and they're heavy. So they'll drop. Um, and it's one of this is one of the ones it's expensive. So I will collect the seed, but I will also really watch out for seedlings popping up where they've been growing and then I will move the seedlings if I want to and keep them because they overwinter quite nicely and um, are, are very useful all through the year and the, it's called honeywort for good reason the bees absolutely love it uh, what else have we got nigella very easy seed to collect in these Stunning seed heads, really great. Oh, that reminds me, I must write them down on my list for next week. Um, I've got a wedding next week and I think Nigella seed heads are stunning in the mix. But um, those, as you can see, are not quite ripe. Perfect time to cut them. The minute they dry out, all the seed falls straight on the ground. But that's another one that I'll watch out for seedlings popping up where they were growing because they seed prolifically. Here comes Fabrizio on the mower. Um, I'm just going to shut the door because otherwise he'll march in and start telling me things. And now 
Tell the dog. Go on, out you go. Anyway, quick, quick, quick. A quick go. So, you get the big idea. Think about what, you, what seed you want to save. Don't save too much. Cut the seed into paper bags and hang the paper bags up so that they, the seed can dry out slowly at its own pace in a cool, airy, outer direct sunlight place. Think twice before you start collecting seed. Would it be easier to split the plant, dig it up and split it? Would it be easier to take cuttings? Really, it's worth thinking about these things. Otherwise, you end up with millions and millions and millions of seed trays. And have you got the space? Um, but if you do save seed, what a lovely thing to do. And then next year, you've already got your garden. You saved yourself a bit of money. So good luck. Have a lovely time. If you've enjoyed this, do uh, subscribe, uh, press the bell icon. And I'd be really grateful if you brought me a coffee. So thank you very much. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.